I remember when thrifting was something I couldn't wait to do on my lunch break and the fact that I've been able to turn that that thing that I couldn't wait for a break from my job to go do into my full-time job um, it just is a testament I think to the plethora of options and opportunities that we have I mean with the internet at your fingertips because I couldn't sell all of this stuff locally to people and make the money that I do but with the internet at your fingertips there are so many job opportunities out there that you don't even know about yet and if there's not a job for the thing that you want to do I'm willing to bet that you could make it into a job somebody originally made reselling into a job you know what I mean somebody thought oh well I can actually pick that up at the thrift store for XYZ and I bet I can sell that on eBay for more and because they thought of that here we are today I want to talk to you guys for a minute about just the freedom of financial and really the time freedom that reselling has afforded me that I'll never get back like money is something you can get back a lot of people talk about financial freedom and I will tell anyone that will listen my my numbers may shock you as a full-time reseller because my family and I live pretty daggum inexpensively and because of that we're able to have financial freedom um, with with numbers that maybe a lot smaller smaller than what you would anticipate just because we don't spend a whole lot of extra money um, money is something you can get back it is but your time is not and we've been talking a lot over on Instagram about how you know a lot of people look at their dream job or their dream career and you think you know it's going to to afford me all this extra money and it's that's not what your dream job is about your dream job and the goal should not be to accumulate the highest bank account the dream and the goal is to spend your day as you want to spend your day like it's 11 o'clock in the morning I'm out here taking care of the garden and uh, scoping out a spot to grow tomatoes and just enjoying the sunshine my kids are off school today and I don't have to worry about who's gonna watch them like I'm watching them I have my children with me because I have you know went after this goal regardless of what other people think that's another thing that I feel like I'd be remiss if I didn't speak to uh, the fear that a lot of people have that, you know, well, what will my full-time friends, you know, in their full-time jobs, what will they think if I try to pursue something like this? And I just want to encourage you beyond that because don't worry, like that chatter about what how you, what you're doing is not a real job, you don't even have to hear that most of the time, especially from um, from nine to five. Honestly, I say that pretty tongue-in-cheek to be honest with you I just wish everyone would seek out whatever it is that motivates them to work from home to be their own boss to clock into their own dream and to seek out the freedom that that you can have and Your finances and your time all right, let's go get in the car for the fun part of the job. This is the part where you become a professional shopper, professional thrifter, treasure hunter, picker. I don't care what you want to call it. You get to go buy stuff and that's just fine. Okay, I am starting out in the glassware. Get familiar with what crystal looks like and how it reacts to sound and light. I think this piece was a crystal, but I really look at those more for personal collection than for resale. I saw this um, and thought that it was Pyrex, turned it over, and sure enough, it is Pyrex. But it was in kind of rough condition. Um, for $2, it would have sold. There was profit there, but it was just, it was too rough. I didn't worry about that. I headed over to the sewing stuff to look for vintage sewing notions, thimbles, anything really cool. Didn't really find anything um, I don't spend a whole lot of time over here but I wanted to show you guys what's happening to the thrift store pricing eight dollars for this little mantle clock and these two tables that a week ago would have been twenty dollars if that were between 75 and a hundred dollars like fifty dollars I think at the at the cheapest meanwhile Hugo Boss shoes for four dollars next to George Walmart shoes also for four dollars so explain that to me the crazy pricing on some items and then this is even crazier to me um, over in the electronics section of this second thrift store, they have so many printers, you guys. Osborne to Thrift has been parting out printers um, just for like the printer heads and the components. And I think one day I need to come in here and just run comps on every one of these printers and see if any of them are worth taking apart for just the printer head and selling those. Um, because I really think that there could be some money to be made there and they always have a ton of printers at this store. So if you're not following Osborne to Thrift, you need to um, over on Instagram and on YouTube as well. I looked through the remotes this day looking for anything Sony or anything AV. You know, you can get $20 plus for a remote. I didn't find anything, so in they went. I checked out a third st thrift store, Goodwill, and found my first piece of Revere Wear copper bottom. This is beautiful. 
The thrift store was really lacking on this day though, like 40% capacity, if that. Where are all the clothes? But just like that, I look hard enough and find this Screen Stars Best Made in the USA single stitch 1988 vintage Cardinals t-shirt. You guys, it is $4, not even marked up in my cart, you go. I found this New York Film Academy shirt and that's interestingly enough the school I was convinced I would go to when I was in high school so I had to stop and pay homage to that one. Um, YouTube, uh, you know I thought about this shirt. It was yellow tag which made it half off. I could have got this for two dollars. Ultimately I left it behind but maybe I should get a t-shirt that's just YouTube. Um, looking through the women's skirts and then something catches my eye. Just You can see the quality from here. And this is DKNY. You will see more about this skirt in the haul at the end of this video. So stay tuned for that. Um, I decided to look through the women's jackets because the cooler weather is really coming to a halt here. So I feel like now would be the time to, to pick something up because people aren't shopping for themselves here. So I'm looking for vintage, looking for luxury. This jacket was pretty cool. Ultimately didn't end up getting it, but I thought it was pretty neat. It just had a a neat colorway to it. I'm wondering what this white uh, windbreaker was and I hope I didn't pass up something good there but I think it was like St. John's Bay or something. I did not find a jacket cool enough to pick it up. Goodwill is always overpriced on their coats which is again interesting. I am laying awake at night thinking about these though. Why did I not buy these? I think these frames were, I think it says $6 a piece. And I, I didn't want the picture. I wanted the frame and then I turned it over and it said made in China. And I thought, uh, it's just this mass produced thing. But I could have used these in our bathroom that we're renovating, painted like king and queen and put maybe a coat hook for, for our towels in each one. Why didn't I get these? I also found these cool cross stitch, um, a geranium and a, a colladium. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, Mary Jane MJ made these in 1983 for someone for Christmas and um, these would have went well on Poshmark but I did leave them there. I had a pretty successful day um, thrifting. Most of this comes from the thrift footage that you just watched but some of it is um, kind of like a spillover from my last video where I had that thrift challenge. If you haven't watched that definitely go check that out but I picked up some things that weren't in the challenge um, and I am going to show you those things today. All right without further ado let's get straight into it. The first item that I want to show you, you saw that like the thrift store prices around here are getting a little crazy. And um, when I saw these for $4 and then right beside them, a pair of George, which is Walmart brand shoes for $4. These are Boss by Hugo Boss. $4 for these shoes, you guys. I mean, they can go for hundreds of dollars new. And I hope to get, I don't know, somewhere between maybe 60 and 100 for these. I haven't officially pulled up comps but the um, type of keywords that you would want to use hopefully you can see that there's a bit of a wing tip there um, on these I would use I don't know that it's a chuck a boot but um, you could use ankle boot or uh, you know terms like that leather obviously these are great boots I cannot believe that the thrift store had them for four dollars right beside a busted pair of men's Walmart shoes for four dollars it just goes to show you sometimes they know what they have but sometimes they have no idea and then other times they think they know what they have and they price it really high and it's not worth that at all so even if your thrift store prices are high, I promise you, you can still make money doing this. Okay, I picked up a couple Beachbody DVDs. I don't know if I, I may check these out on my own because my husband and I do enjoy circuit training to um, different videos and being able to weight train. And this one definitely looks like it has weights involved, but these Beachbody, I will comp them out. I paid $1 a piece for these at the Teen Challenge thrift store. Can you sell Beachbody on eBay? Next item that I have is this gorgeous Whiting and Davis bag. Not really sure whether or not this is going to go up for sale. Don't know if the camera's picking it up, but this is actually a very pale blue. So this is called Metal Mesh, and the company to look for with Metal Mesh is Whiting and Davis. And I love Whiting and Davis. You guys have seen me pick it up and thrift it before. I just think it is phenomenal. I paid, I think, $350. For this purse um i will pay that every day for this purse this is beautiful it is missing a little piece with a uh, metal mesh you want to look it over and see if they're missing any little squares but i love this bag i think it is so beautiful and um it's gonna be hard not to keep this this may be one of those items that i put up for sale for the right price right am i right do you guys do that you you put up some things for sale that um maybe you want to keep but you're willing to sell it if the price is right 
All right, if you guys hear my son in the background, another beautiful perk of working from home on the days that the kids don't have school during summer vacation, you have some really cute little coworkers. I picked up a couple of cool vintage games. Well, it's a game and a toy. This is called Quazy Quilts. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't say that out loud right now. Quazy Quilts. If you said it out loud, then like this video. Um, Quazy Quilt is a haiku puzzle and it has all of these, I don't know, these little plastic forms that you try to fit in, uh, I guess, to the puzzle form. I paid $2 for this and it looked like it was going around $30 on eBay. So I like to save vintage games and I picked that up. My oldest son, who is 14, loves to um, skate. He loves to skateboard. He loves um, s to ride a scooter. And he thinks these are so cool. This is like, uh, I don't want to say like Heelys. These attach to your, um, your existing shoes. I'll show you here on the back. So these work for a child size all the way up to like a men's size 10 or 11. And you can supposedly skate around town with these and fit them in your pocket when you're not using them. These are brand new and they were $350 and uh, they look to be selling on eBay also around $30. So my general rule of thumb is that if I can make 10 times my money, I'm very happy with that. That's where I try to pick up. If you're just getting into reselling, I would say set yourself a budget per item. I try to not pick up anything over $5 dollars when I first started. I stick pretty well to that today, but I will spend a little bit more for an item that's going to be either a very quick sale or net me quite a bit of money. So set yourself a budget and stick to it. I found another reseller in my area and I could tell she was a reseller by the look in her eyes. And I was going to try to show you guys me picking this up and I put it back on the shelf so I could like zoom in like, aha, I found it. And no, she was headed my direction and I snatched it right back off the shelf. This is a Burberry dust bag and Goodwill had this for $3, you guys. So I think I'm going to sell this. The problem, I almost didn't get it because this is white and every one of them that I found, the drawstring was black. So I want to make sure that this is authentic before I sell it, but it is a flannel Burberry dust bag. Um, you might be surprised to see how much dust bags go for. They had a coach one, it was also $3. I have some coach dust bags that I haven't even listed and like I say this being Burberry I don't own really any Burberry myself and it's just a dust bag so I don't know I may consider keeping it and I may um, just list it I'll probably just end up listing this okay you saw in one of the videos where I was looking at handkerchiefs and I put the handkerchief back down because it said made in China Hobby Lobby and then guys it was right underneath it the handkerchief right <laughs> underneath it were the made in America ones that I'm looking for so this is what you're looking for on handkerchiefs. Um, no, normally, you are looking for the brand Fast Color. This is Color Fast, made in the USA. It has the RN number and it's 100% cotton. So just the fact that it's a vintage handkerchief, this was 50 cents. And then right underneath it was the Paris brand, which is another brand that you want to look for. All cotton, cotton Color Fast, made in the USA. Um, this one is of imported fabric. But another good vintage handkerchief. Okay, and then I go to Goodwill and what do I find? Two more vintage handkerchiefs and these are the Paris brand also. These look a little bit different on the, um, on the wording there. So I have four now vintage handkerchiefs and guys they go for around ten dollars a piece so 50 cents a piece, two dollar pickup um, that I'll be able to get at least 40 bucks for it. While I was at that Goodwill, oh my gosh, you guys, I see this scarf and I'm always looking at women's vintage scarves. This one is so sheer and beautiful. And I see, I'm always looking for the signature, the name. And this one had a little name down here, Diane Von Furstenberg. And I'm just now actually seeing that there's a tag. I didn't even see that. And it says for um, Bar and Beards Inc. So it's Diane Von Furstenberg for, it's all silk made in Japan. <clears throat> This is a beautiful, beautiful little scarf. I have not comped this out yet, but it was, let's see, Goodwill wanted $1 for it. So yes, absolutely take my money. Silk vintage designer scarf for $1. Obviously, you need some skill and know-how in this job. You can't just blindly pick up everything in the thrift store. But guys, there are several of these pickups I feel like any novice would know looking at it, I can get more than that for it. So don't be intimidated to jump in. And jump in with some of these small little items that are going to take nothing to ship. They're not going to cost you much to ship and they're going to be easy um, to 
learn how to ship and that is how you should get your feet wet. I, could, I always look at the linens and I could tell looking at these linens that they were high quality. They just looked like a nice woven material. They are a woven linen. And then when I get close enough, I see Pottery Barn and like um, Lavender Clothesline. I am just gonna pick up <laughs> Pottery Barn. Shout out to Lavender Clothesline. If you guys don't watch her channel, it's very good. She has a ton of knowledge over on Instagram also. I'll link below to her channel and you should definitely check her out. But anyway, um, Pottery Barn linens and Pottery Barn dishes go for really nice money. So this is a set of three zipper pillowcases and they are big, big squares. Um, when I got them home, I did not open them up at the thrift store. So a kind of a rookie move there. Um, because when I got them home, I noticed that one of them has a spot on it. Oh, here it is. One of them, it looks like a glitter puff paint, maybe. Glitter slime, glitter puff paint, something attacked here. So I'm gonna try to heat this up and see if I can get it peeled off. Otherwise, I may just sell it as a set of two. But I think these are beautiful, you guys. And pillowcases at that particular thrift store are a dollar or less. I wanna say maybe 50 cents for Pottery Barn pillowcases. Pottery Barn is a brand you should be picking up. Talking about Pottery Barn, my youngest son, Israel. Israel, you wanna come say hi? Come here. This is my son, Israel, and he found these plates. Let's show him the plates we found. He found these plates at the thrift store. Did you think these were nice? Yeah. Why do you like these? Because I like the bird, the little ones and the bird ones, and the, can you put the ones in the, and the orange put, put the ones. You like the pumpkin ones? Yeah. Were they beautiful? Yeah. He picked these out and they were a dollar a piece and then I turned them over and guys, they are Pottery Barn. And so for a dollar a piece and there was, I think there's five of them, Israel. Yeah. These will sell for um, 60 to $75. So a $5 pickup into 75 bucks. I'm telling you that reselling is so easy, a four year old could do it. Good job, buddy, high five. That was a solid pickup. Should I list it? Yeah. All right. <laughs> While I was at Goodwill, I found a $3 calculator and it's the TI-83 Plus. It, this won't be a huge money maker, but they sell pretty quickly and pretty consistently. Um, I'm not afraid of getting 10 times my money on this, somewhere in the $30, $40 mark, hopefully for this. Like I say, TI-83 Plus. I've got to finish running comps on that and I've got to get it tested because there were no batteries in the back. And I know some resellers will even take will even take batteries with them to the thrift store so that you don't run into that problem of not knowing if an item works. One of the pickups I had in my last video was a cell phone. Well, the guy sold me every cell phone in his case for $2 a piece. I just randomly sold, sold some cell phones that didn't have any chargers and were untested. Four of them sold for $20 a piece and they were flip phones just like this. And these actually have been tested, so I will list these individually. $2 pickups. This is an LG. This one is the HTC brand. These are smartphones, you guys. Um, this one is a flip phone and this one is a smartphone. So for $2 a piece, Again, not worried about making 10 times my money on these two, four, six, eight, eight dollars. And I'm confident I will probably get closer to $150 once all is said and done for this eight dollar pickup. This was an interesting pickup. I picked up crayons and these were all in one bag, but guys, I ended up pulling them out as far as the ones that were vintage and the ones that are not. How can you tell if a crayon is vintage? There is an entire market for vintage Crayola. Let me just tell you that. And there's a market for retired Crayola. Let me show you the difference in these two crayons. Okay, here we have just a typical Crayola crayon. It has the color here. And then as you roll in under, you can see it says Crayola.com. It's just pretty, pretty normal. And lavender again, how appropriate. And let me show you this Crayola crayon. Crayola, there's the color magenta, and then now you see it doesn't say Crayola.com. It actually has a brand name down here. It says Benny Biney and Smith, Easton, Pennsylvania with the zip code, and it says made in the USA. These particular crayons can go for more than what a typical crayon would. And then the ones that are newer, don't discount them because colors like Dandelion, that, which are discontinued, can go for quite a bit of money. 
the vintage crayon to look for was done away with in about 1963 and it is a light tan peachy color called flesh done away with for obvious reasons but that one will net you the the biggest return i've seen on ebay in the realm of vintage and discontinued crayons so if you're looking specifically for one look for the color flesh Nothing super exciting on this next pickup, but I wanted to get a particular VHS tape and they were five for a dollar. So because I didn't want four other random VHS tapes, I looked around for new VHS tapes and I was able to find these. Fun fact though, when you are mailing unopened blank media, this cannot go media mail. This must go first class. So consider that when you're listing the item and work that into your price. So um, media mail is for educational purposes. The these are blank, these are for commercial purposes, and you cannot mail these media mail. This next piece is a Cache brand dress, and this is a black beautiful dress. I hoped to pick this up for myself. I haven't tried it on yet. You can see the waist detailing there, so beautiful. This was $5 at Goodwill, and if it doesn't fit, Cache is a really great brand, and I'm not worried about um, being able to resell that. So hopefully this one is a keeper, is a winner for me. I really, really think it's beautiful and it's very good quality that's one thing you know the more and more that you resell the more you can almost just run your hand down a line of clothes and pick out linen and pick out um you know cashmere and wool and items like that they're they're practically going to jump out at you so yes to this dress right my first time finding this brand, I found Show Me Your Moo Moo. <laughs> so that is a brand that a lot of uh, resellers that strictly resell over on the Poshmark community talk a lot about Show Me Your Moo Moo. I see Empty Hanger talk about that brand quite a bit. And um, I have never been able to find it. So this dress has a halter style neckline that ties and then it is like a gathered elastic in the back. I'm sorry it's kind of difficult to show this exactly on camera but I think you get the idea. But I didn't notice the bottom has this sheer panel after a long skirt like after there's a shorter skirt inside and then it's a bit more sheer. So I'm not really sure. I'll try this on. If this is beautiful on I may keep it. While I'm still in this crazy priced Goodwill because they raised their prices big time and they got these new tags. Um, but they had things priced like this dusty old Roomba vacuum was $50. You guys, it was so scratched and dusty. It looked like, I mean, someone wanted it out of their life is why they brought it up to Goodwill and Goodwill had the nerve to ask 50 bucks for it. Um, at that same place, I found a $4 DKNY skirt. So let me see the best way that I can show you the details on this skirt. Okay, there we are, there we are. Beautiful wrap design here. This skirt is gorgeous. If this was my size, again, I'd be keeping it. Um, it's just a problem with reselling. You pick up so many cool clothes and you have an ever revolving closet. Um, here is the DKNY label. This is super high quality. Four bucks, you guys. I have not ran comps on this one yet. Um, I'm thinking four t or ten times my money isn't really going to be an issue. But if not, I mean, it was cheap enough at four dollars. You know, even if I end up thirty or something around there, I think we'd be good. But I think at DKNY, it's going to sell for a lot more than that. You guys saw me um, in the men's t-shirt selection and this thrift store, this Goodwill this day, was probably 40% capacity and even amongst all of that, I have proof that I must be the only reseller some days in some of these stores. I see this vintage Cardinals baseball tee and you saw me look at it as soon as I saw it in the thrift store. It is a big star or screen stars uh, best logo which is really really good made in the USA size large so that's good for vintage and then it does have the single stitch on the sleeve here which you know just has that one single stitch versus a modern t-shirt let me show you what a modern shirt would look like would have two rows of stitching in that same spot and the single stitching is actually more durable but obviously the manufacturing costs are higher and so they quit doing it like that so it's just a single stitch on the side look at this cardinals logo you guys this shirt is so dope it is this is from 1988 i was three years old and this shirt is in gorgeous condition not a single thing wrong with it i picked this up at goodwill for $4. Thank you, Goodwill, for pricing that Roomba at $50 and vintage single stitch for four bucks. 
Just another example that they don't always know everything that they have, okay? This next item is a men's v-neck Levi shirt and it, it has the red tab there on the pocket. This was a $4 pickup. I really like the look of it. I like the look of Levi and I don't feel like that's a brand I ever have trouble selling. I bought this for me. Zion uh, Rootswear is the brand. This is a 2X men's and I'm probably going to cut it off and make it a crop top. It is Johnny Cash and I love Johnny Cash. I love Johnny Cash t-shirts. So yeah, I may cut this off and make it a really loose fitting crop top. This is cool and I bought this for $2. This next pair of shoes, I was pretty excited when I saw them. I thought that they just looked really interesting and you can tell that the leather was really good quality. So I wasn't familiar with this brand. Um, I'm going to butcher the name, so just bear with me. Giuseppe Zanotti Design. And when I looked this up, um, let's see, Goodwill wanted $8 for them. And when I looked these up, new they can go for anywhere to, between two and four hundred dollars depending on the style and the design and these were selling for over a hundred dollars a pair over on ebay so eight dollars absolutely all day long if you're new to reselling something looks interesting something looks high quality look it up you don't have to know every single brand you just have to be willing to look it up and do a little bit of research this next item is a Modella breast pump bottle. I actually found seven of these for 50 cents a piece in sterilized packaging. So I will probably lot these all up together and sell them for uh, more than 10 times my money, at least 10 times my money, 35 to $40 for all seven of them. I saw this little kettle, this little pot, and I saw that it says Paul Revere, and that caused me to look at the bottom and, of course, find that copper bottom, and it says Revere Wear. So this is a pretty popular uh, brand over on eBay to resell. Revere Wear sells pretty decently. This, I should be able to get around $30 for this. I paid $3, so 10 times my money was definitely there on this pickup. Um, so Revere Wear is one that you want to take a look at and anything with a copper bottom. Um, if you have one of these brand new, it can go for substantially more than this, but used about 30 bucks. I was excited to find these vintage used panties. I found these for 50 cents, I believe is what I paid. Yes, 50 cents for these Vanity Fair um, panties. And they are like a lace and pretty sheer, obviously. Uh, comment below and let me know what you think I can end up getting for these Vanity Fair. Um, now it does have the gusset is 100% cotton. The rest of them, they are nylon and spandex and made in the USA. Okay, there is the tag made in the USA, and I'll just show you the Vanity Fair tag here. So if you are unfamiliar, Vanity Fair Vintage Lingerie does have a really good following in anything nylon. Um, sheer, the better. So yeah, I'm excited to see what my 50 cents can turn into on those, but that's a bolo item for you. Um, speaking of being a full-time treasure hunter, I found actual gold, which is it's always exciting when you find gold. And I will tell you at thrift stores, it is 100% of the time worth looking at clasp on jewelry. Um, yes, you will get dirty looks for looking at clasp on jewelry because people will know that you're trying to find either gold or certain brands. And I always tell people though, that's not in, that's not specifically what I'm looking for. Sometimes I'm looking for a mark that says like, Mexico or West Germany or I mean it can be costume jewelry costume jewelry something antique or vintage or designer and still be worth quite a bit of money so I'm just always interested in what the marks are this is a tiny little tennis bracelet definitely not long enough to be an anklet the brand is Arafin which I believe is sold at Macy's and it, this is 14 karat gold the clasp is broken on this I will weigh this I may try to fix the clasp on this because it's it's just separated um, but I will weigh this also in the photo if you are selling gold whether it is for scrap or there's nothing wrong with it always weigh it because your buyer may be someone that wants the weight of the gold for scrap so 14 karat gold I paid one dollar for this item it is always worth looking up I could not tell you the number of times that I find 14 karat 24 karat um, I find gold all the time three more items to show you guys real quick this one is a matchbox car little ice cream truck I just thought that this was super super fun again have not looked up comps on this yet I'll tell you on the bottom it says Hot Wheels good humor truck Mattel Inc 1983 
I just thought this was so cute. It has the appeal for Hot Wheels collectors. It has the appeal for um, advertising, good humor, ice cream truck. Like there's multiple genres of people that this can appeal to. It is vintage being 1983. So I picked this up and I probably paid a quarter for this. I found two vintage Timex watches that I thought were very interesting and I'll tell you why I thought each one of them was interesting. This first one, it has a very thick uh, bezeled glass and on the back it says Timex Cell and somewhere on this watch I saw that it says Timex England. So it says Timex Electric also on the, on the cover here and then this one, this one is a really neat women's Timex watch in gold tone. Neither of these are a precious metal. I may lot these up together. Um, I paid $2 a piece, which I, I may have overspent on that because I don't know that I can get $20 a piece, but I did just sell a men's pretty rough condition vintage Timex for $20 with free shipping. Um, so I may lot these up together and sell them somewhere in the 30s and uh, that'd be a pretty good return on my investment for $4 investment. Just thought that they were really neat watches. The last item I have to show you guys comes out of doing research on eBay. When I'm not looking at my own items, when I'm not running comps, when I just have a little bit of extra time to pour into researching what sells, let me tell you how I reverse engineer my reselling business to look up comps. I will look up, let's just say pillows. Let's say I want to know what are people spending on pillows over on eBay. I will type in pillows. I will go to sold, filter, sold, and then I will um, sort that by highest to lowest. I want to know what is the most people are willing to spend on eBay on a pillow and what do those pillows look like? I have reverse engineered this with um, coats, with shoes, with all kinds of vintage things. Sometimes I just type in the word vintage and I click sold and then filter highest to lowest. What is the most expensive stuff people are willing to spend um, you know, on a vintage item? What is the what are those items that they're willing to spend the most on? Well, I have done that with vintage luggage because vintage luggage is plentiful in my area. And um, over and over again, I find a brand that is Hartman. Obviously the top of the, the tier is always like the Louis Vuitton and vintage designer luggage, Louis Vuitton, Gucci, things like that. But then Hartman shows up in the several hundreds of dollars for these leather suitcases. And it's a brand that is always in my mind. And this week I finally found it. You guys saw a clip of me finding that for $4. Let me show you the suitcase. This suitcase was again, only $4. It has these beautiful clasps, um, these like snaps on the side and those cover the locks that you saw probably in my video. It says Hartman luggage here on the side. Um, it is missing one of the little feet, one of the little brass feet, this one down here. And it's in semi rough condition. You can tell from the handle here, this thing's been well loved, but one just like it, and I would consider rougher condition, sold for over $200. So $4 for this thing, absolutely. And I only knew about Hartman luggage and knew that it was something worth picking up from doing that research in my spare time. So. Um, suppose it's sunglasses. You want to know what are the brands that people buy in sunglasses and not new sunglasses. You could click sunglasses, filter, sold, condition, used. What are the brands of used sunglasses that people want to spend the most money on? You can literally do this with any category. Christmas is coming up, Halloween is coming up. Type in Halloween decorations, sold, filter, highest to lowest. Find out what are people looking for? What are they willing to spend the most money on? That is how I turn $4 into $200 on that suitcase. So I hope that you are able to use that tip and make a lot of money in the future. All right, guys, that's gonna just about do it for today's video. I hope you liked this video. If you did, definitely give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing and turn on bell notifications so that you get notified the three times a week that I upload here on YouTube. Thank you again so much for watching. Share this video with someone that you know is looking for that at-home hustle that will enable them to stay at home with their children, to work from home, and to have that time freedom to spend their day how they really want to. God bless you guys, and as always, treat your business like your business. I wanted to show you guys how awesome my Brussels sprouts are doing. Brussels sprouts are cool weather, so I planted these last fall. They survived through that treacherous winter that we had, and you guys, I might actually have some Brussels sprouts this year. Comment below if you've ever grown Brussels sprouts and you can tell me what to do, what not to do.